Good morning, everyone. Yeah, and welcome to the 36th anniversary celebration. Yes. My name is Dana Robinson. I'm one of the co-founders of our young adult group, Connecticut Scent. Ryan and I co-founded the group together. He just waved in. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> And I'm originally from Albany, Georgia, that's South Georgia. And I was raised Southern Baptist. And one of the things, even as a kid, I would wonder about is, why can't we all just love each other as we are? And so thus sparked my spiritual journey, which led me to the Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta three years ago. And I'm grateful to say that today you all are a part of my spiritual family and this is my spiritual home. Yes. yes. So for today's service, we're doing something a little different here. A year ago or so, some of the members set intentions for themselves and for the center. And so today, what we're going to do is honor those intentions and how they support the center's mission. And if you take out your program, there's a handout inside. And would you read the mission statement with me? To reawaken all to their spiritual magnificence. Thank you and welcome. There's one power invisible And you see it everywhere and every day One power indescribable And you speak of it with every word you say Ooh, mysterious until you know the truth as simple as the love inside of you. One 
We speak so many languages, have different clothing, different colors, different names. But different is only dangerous. We forget, and in the heart we're all the same. We'll remember once we close our eyes to see that such distances were never meant to be. Call it God, call it Spirit, call it Jesus, call it Lord, call it Buddha, Baha Buddha, Hashem, or Heaven's door. It's Muhammad, it's your mind, it's your soul. It's the moment of creation. It's an everlasting peace. It's the freedom of forgiveness. It's the sweetness of release. It's the joy of inspiration. It's the sunshine on your face. It's the birthright of all nations. It's the boundlessness of space. It's the beauty of a baby. The serenity. just sung, One Power, was sung in this congregation for many, many years every single Sunday. So it's awesome to honor that again yes. with that song. Good morning. <clears throat> My name is Lane Morgan, and I found the Science of Mind in 2002 after searching for a spiritual community that would support me and my daughter. And this morning, I want to talk to you about our first value statement. So if you could get that little flyer out again. If we could read it together, it's about teaching. <clears throat> Through the teaching of divine truth, SLCA guides all along their spiritual journey and transforms lives. Yes. And <laughs> the song we just sung about that one power is the one power that Ernest Holmes, our founder, taught about so many years ago. The Science of Mind was, the Centers for Spiritual Living were founded in the 1920s when Ernest Holmes published his book, The Science of Mind. He began this movement by teaching small groups of people in public spaces. And he began a movement of teaching that became so strong as it grew and it grew, he had to teach other people this philosophy so that they too could speak to all of the people that were interested in hearing it. And over time, an organization was developed, and now there are hundreds of spiritual living centers all over the country and around the world. 
36 years ago, Kennedy Schultz brought this philosophy to Atlanta, and it began with a small group of people meeting in a bar to talk about this <laughs> philosophy. And over the years, that small group grew larger and larger, and just like Ernest did years prior, Kennedy Schultz began teaching this philosophy to students. Some of them became practitioners, and some of them became ministers. And here we are today, together under this teaching, learning the science of mind. It's very understandable that one of our major intentions as a center is to guide others on their spiritual journey and transform lives through this teaching. As Ernest Holmes says, teach and practice, practice and teach. That is all we have, that is all we're good for, that is all we ought ever do. Every week there are teachers and speakers here at the Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta continu continuing the legacy that Ernest Holmes began all those years ago in California. Every week you all participate in conversations about this philosophy that literally heals and transform lives. Please raise your hand if you have ever taken a class here at SLCA. Look around, look around. It gives me great joy as a teacher that every week someone remembers that they are divine, that there is a power in the universe and that you can use it, and that life is good and very good. That's why we're here every week. This teaching has changed my life and the lives of so many around me. I have dedicated my future to this teaching and to the difference it can make to everyone that it touches. Next June, I will graduate and become a minister and start my career as an official minister in this movement. That's how much this teaching means to me. And today we celebrate 36 years of science of mind in Atlanta. We also celebrate over 90 years of this teaching in America, and we celebrate the intention to continue this legacy in our spiritual home. So let us anchor this intention in with an affirmative prayer. There is only one, one truth, one wisdom, one eternal knowing, one mind, and that one is what I call God. That one is always present and ever powerful. This one power is creative and expressive in every moment, in every circumstance, and in every sentient being. This power was the mind of Ernest Holmes. It is the mind of Reverend David Alt. It's my mind and it's the mind of each one here. This power expresses in, as, and through each of us. And I affirm that the teaching of this truth at SLCA changes lives, uplifts hearts, and creates synergy in our community. I affirm that the classes we offer here, the Sunday experiences that bring people together, and the God that we teach about all make a big difference to all who come through our doors. I realize that where two or more are gathered together, the power of God, the power of truth is present, and spirit interacts with itself in beautiful and loving ways. I'm so thankful for my spiritual home, for the teaching of science of mind, and with a grateful heart, I release my word to the law, and so it is. I'm better on this service. I was a crybaby at the other one. <laughs> one Power was the song that we always heard when we were walking to the Woodruff Art Center. I am David Michael Searcy. I am an ordained Wiccan priest, a spiritual living center practitioner, and a Pentecostal boy. <laughs> so that makes me a spiritual mutt. <laughs> I am so honored today. This, this day is bringing so much up for me. Um, I have my loving partner, John, here. and. I have my Wiccan community and High Priestess here. Um, so this is a grand honor to merge my two families as one. So um, Sorry. And I have a young priest here who I'm having the pleasure to mentor into the priesthood, who's getting to see a center that truly believes and lives their oneness. I came here when Kennedy Schultz was the pastor. 
And to me, he was like Liberace. He was bigger than life. <laughs> it was wonderful. It didn't stick at the moment. I walked away for some years. And then I returned on one Easter morning, eager for no reason at all, had to be God as God, to get into this building, the building of the Woodruff. And I walked in, and Kennedy wasn't there, to my surprise. There was another minister there, Reverend Paul Gagne. And he was teaching on Easter Sunday, Easter from the Wiccan pagan point of view. You knew I was home. <laughs> I put my shoes in here and I said, okay, I'm sticking. <laughs> and it's been a wonderful journey. I'm so loving this experience. And I'm so loving to see what happens for our beautiful, wonderful future. Read with me the value statement. SOCA is a community of inclusion welcoming the spiritual and life paths of all life. I changed that last part. Thank you. We are a community that together we discover and remember and live our spiritual magnificence. We support our community's differences across generations, cultures, and geographies. As a truly global philosophy, we embrace the fact that we are diverse and use that energy and creativity to empower one another. Here at the Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta, we speak a truth that all are loved, wanted, and welcomed. The science of mind teaching embraces all paths that positively lead to God as God. Whatever, whether, I'm sorry, whoever you are, black, white, straight, gay, transgendered, Pentecostal, Wiccan, Christian, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, we are all brothers and sisters. This is a philosophy that can be shared and bridged with all spiritual paths. I do it every day. Our core belief of oneness is that all people want a better way to experience the world in which extends not only to the members here, but to the world. This teaching guides us into a better way of being. That better way of being translates into oneness. And remember, oneness does not mean sameness. There is no one way to fully express, to express in life if you're not fully in your authentic self, and that's what this teaching promotes. This world needs you. You're here for such a time and place as this. This is no accident. If you weren't here, there'd be a hole in the fabric of our universe. You truly are welcomed here. We understand that ideas come from one spirit, and that download comes to all of us. So we are so open to dialogue and sharing and connecting and hearing your truths, because your truths makes up, make us a better people and a better community. We are a center that goes beyond the expected to make certain that our members are thriving in their own true spiritual magnificence. Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta, it's like no other. Inclusion is a better way to experience the world and be challenged to deliver your best authentic you. Inclusion is about being and feeling physically, mentally, and spiritually safe. Inclusion is honoring your own truth and honoring the truths of others. Remember, the truth, that truth is a journey, not a destination. And in the words of the avatar, forest geeks, what do they say? I see you. Oh, you guys know it. <laughs> so there's an activity. You know, whenever I speak, I, I always have an activity. So take the hand of your beloved next to you, please. And turn and look at that beloved. Look into their eyes. Let's get cozy and deep. There could be some relationships starting here today. <laughs> and when you look into their eyes, I want you to speak to them and say, I see you. We're still holding hands. Still holding hands. No making out, wait until the service is over. <laughs> still holding hands. 
We're going to go into spiritual mind treatment, affirming to prayer. Let's go into that sweet spot that we go to every moment in our lives. So I recognize, and I know this, that God is God. The all spark is all there is and ever will be. I stand in the knowing that universal oneness and inclusion is at the very core of all life. I know that I am one with universal love and acceptance, which allows me to be a loving, peaceful bridge builder between faiths and beings of all kind. The eternal love of spirit moves in, through, and as me, as it does through all that are present, seen, and unseen today. I know this truth of inclusion for myself, and I know it for all who are within the vibrations of my voice. It's from this knowing and awareness of my oneness with all life that I speak this word of inclusion, which is the perfect outpicturing of my life. This beautiful paradisical expression moves in all areas of my life, right here and right now. Knowing that my word is already complete, in the mind of source, I give thanks, and I am grateful for all that is now manifesting in my world of oneness and in this brilliant idea called Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta. From the highest vibration of gratitude, I release this word into perfect law. And as I release this word into perfect law, my word cannot return unto me void, but will completely and divinely go far beyond whatever I utter or think. Right now, I know that spirit will one-up me every time, always one-up me every time, going beyond, going beyond the frames of my mind and my consciousness, because I'm filling my cup up. And my cup is huge. And I'm basking in this presence. And I'm basking in this love. And I'm basking in this energy that we call the one, the all, and the only. And with this knowing, we take this word out into the universe. And we say, so mo it be, so it is, and blessed be. Continuing in that, uh, to anchor that beauty in and that love, thank you so much for inclusion, our value statement. On the other side, you'll see we have lyrics to a wonderful song called We Are One. Please join us. Good morning and namaste. <laughs> and the drama continues. <laughs> I am here representing service, so if you'll take the sheet out and let us read together the statement for service. Reverend, 
whole of humankind, mind, body, and spirit through loving action. Reverend David was reminding me that some people may be here who don't know me. And some of you who do may not know everything about me that I'm about to share. My journey began in California, where I was born and lived my entire life until I moved to Atlanta in 1999. My spiritual journey began as a child in the Methodist Church, and it wasn't until 1993 that I discovered religious science and became a member of a Science of Mind Center in Oakland, California. So now that you know that part of who I am, I would also like for you to know that I'm all about service. We are, each one of us, here to serve. Service is an act of doing, but even more than the activity, it begins within the heart as a way of being. We are not in this world alone, and the ancient ageless wisdom crossing all cultures and religions has taught us that we are here to love one another. That divine love indwells all people, whether they are conscious of this spiritual truth and act accordingly or not. We are called to be loving, compassionate beings in the world. We are called to serve. Our service must first come from our heart, from that place within that feels a connection with others. Centers for Spiritual Living, our parent organization, has adopted a purpose to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. And its vision is to help bring into being a world that works for everyone. Each of us is needed. Each of us has something of value to contribute. Some may choose to take their skills and talents into faraway places, while others may serve in soup kitchens in their local community. Still others labor alone, creating their personal offering as a painting, a sculpture, a song, a poem, or perhaps a sustainable garden. All this is service. When the greeters here at SLCA smile and open the door for us saying, good morning, that's service. Our teachers upstairs tending the children and teaching them spiritual principles in fun, creative ways, that's service. Volunteers preparing morning refreshments and displaying them beautifully, that's service. When the choir, the musicians and dancers spend hours rehearsing to share their talents on Sunday and elevate our collective conscious and vibration, that's service. The practitioners ascend those stairs and lovingly await those who come in need of prayer, that's service. There's so much more seen and unseen that takes place here. The technicians, the board members, the director, the office manager, each staff person's service is so essential and each one always going beyond. Reverend David's weekly talks are evidence of this service in action as he consistently provides us spiritual sustenance. Whether here, at home, or in our place of employment, we are always at service. Remember 
Service is not just an activity, the what that you may be doing. Service is your why, your purpose and way of being. As Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. As I keep doing my spiritual practices, studying, learning, growing, I have discovered that there are innumerable ways to serve here. Among those ways for me, I participate in the adult study group upstairs every Sunday morning. Sometimes I bring interesting films into this center and share them with you. Another way that I serve is the high honor of being a practitioner. So I choose to stay open, to listen, and to be obedient. If I am called by spirit, I always say yes. That inner intuitive nudge keeps me in service because I know who I am really serving through me, as me, I serve God. What I'm going to do now is to share with you another way in which I give service, and that is through the practice of Tai Chi. And I'm going to invite you to participate in a moment and stand. And we're going to do just a very simple A very simple move, but I think it demonstrates the power of Tai Chi, which is moving the energy in our physical body, but also in our mind and in our spirit. Please stand. Clear your hands. And rub them together vigorously until you can feel some heat. Rub the palm of the hands, the center, the fingertips. When you think you feel them heated up, just very slowly with the hands slightly cupped, pull them apart as wide as your body. Inhale, exhale as you bring them back close but not touching. Take a breath, open up and bring them together. Once again, inhale and open. Exhale and close. Turn your hands down. Slowly lower them. Take a breath. And release it. I'm not going to ask if you felt anything because I already know that you did. <laughs> and so it is. So it is. <laughs> My name is Nola. I got to get close. <laughs> My theme is love. So I got to get close. <laughs> okay. My name is Nola Jones Perry. I was born in sunny Trinidad in the West Indies. And I was originally an Anglican. It's Episcopalian, it's called here. But I've been in New Thought teaching since I was yay high in the 70s. That's yay high. <laughs> My value statement is love. So come read with me that statement that says... SLCA express love by valuing and accepting all unconditionally. What a choice to value and to accept all unconditionally. Don't you feel safe in this place? That's what it is about. It's about feeling safe because with feeling safe, guess what happens? We relax. We get into that mode of learning, sharing, and being who we really are, 
that authentic self of which we speak, or of which we hear because we are yet working on it, who's authentic right now with how he or she behaves, or is that a path we are on? It is a path we are on. So that love heals. Love is that food, that energy, that energy that says yes to every cell, muscle, organ in that body that reverberates with perfection. That is love. That moment that we awake and say yes to life is that moment of love. Let's make sure we recognize that before you even put your feet on the floor. I am. What am I? I am love. Let's say it really feeling it. I am love. That's an attribute that from God that we can fashion our every thought, word, or deed as an expression of God. I am love. We welcome each one who enters with unconditional love to the center. We acknowledge and we value each soul on its journey to a greater understanding through new thought to express in his or her life perfection, wholeness, Love, joy, peace, and opulence. Let's say that word. I like that word. Opulence. And guess what? It comes with love. The more we love ourselves, the more we know we are worthy of opulence. Feel it. Come on. Let me see that you feel it. Love has nurtured and produced a thriving community here at SLCA. We get to consciously express God and experience God as love. Despite our various beliefs and qualities, we unite in the understanding that mental healing through the practice, and this is part that I copied from Reverend David Ault, that we practice of universal spiritual principles and that it works. Like love, it works. We know the universe is impersonal and it gives the like to all. We recognize your unique ability to express the very essence of God. And that's where I go back to the attributes. Love is one of them. We are here to express love. love. Give yourself a hug on that one. <laughs> in my own experience, <laughs> I, in my own experience, I was assigned to a project once. And um, you know how the mind works? And it's, I kept saying, oh my God, how, how am I? going to work with this person. I don't know this person. You know, and I just kept going and going and then suddenly it dawned on me, wait a minute now, what are you practicing? I must say, I grew. Not only did I grow, I was destined to learn what it meant to accept and value someone unconditionally. And what's we, what are we about? Being accepted and valued unconditionally. Of course, you know that love comes with patience and understanding. It removed the fear and any negativity that might have surfaced. Love created a happy, harmonious atmosphere where learning and sharing was experienced. And the depth of the learning surpassed any that I had experienced before. So together we know we must, Love. we're going to practice. Love. I like that word. Love. Okay. <laughs> As members of this community, I know that love makes a difference, notably in our relationships. To value and accept all unconditionally, it's a law. Because guess what? What we give out, we? So as we? And we love intentionally, we get back? And who doesn't want any? Okay. Together, let us rise, raise our energy levels to experience the infinite possibility possibilities and potential that love is. Now we're not going to just stay with that human sense of love. We are going into that which God is, that which we are. Let us envision this sanctuary and classrooms constantly filled with like-minded members. Let us open our hearts and minds to being channels of the opulence already created for us. So together we know and we are going to be the expressions of love not only as we are right here and right now, but as a member of Spirit of Living Center, as a member of the universe, as a member of a, the tribe called 
the spirit you're living center of Atlanta and all over wherever it is. So from deep within me, I thank you for celebrating our 36th anniversary with us. And I know that the spiritual living center of Atlanta will continue to reach thousands weekly with the concept of experiencing each one's spiritual magnificence. Give yourself a hug because you are Thank you. Eres el rostro de Dios Estás en mi corazón Eres parte de mí Eres el rostro de Dios Tú eres el visage de Dios Je te tiens dans mon cœur. Tu es une partie de moi. Tu es le visage de Dieu. You are indeed the face of God. Tu es le visage de Dieu. My name is Karen Ratz. I was born in Bloomington, Indiana. I am a Hoosier. And I found this center in 2007 and have been changed at depth ever since. Guess what value statement I get to do? I begged, I pleaded. We're going to do prosperity. Can you get your sheet out? And let's do prosperity together. We at SLCA know that spirit is our inexhaustible source of prosperity, which is our divine right. All right, let's break that up into three parts. Starting with we at SLCA know. That's determinative. That's not squishy. We're guessing maybe, maybe there's prosperity, maybe there's not, right? That's not a guess. We at SLCA know there is prosperity. How? How do we know? Experience. The experience of 36 years of faith to form. 36 years of faith to form from Admiral Bilbao Bar, whatever that was called, to the <laughs> Woodruff. 36 years of people getting exactly what they needed. Hundreds of people getting exactly what they needed. Our experience in the last four years. Do you know that you can make a choice and a decision to have a multi-million dollar building and what you get is on I-85 inside the perimeter with a parking lot, two stories, 25,000 square feet and brick? 
Do you know you can get that with choice and decision? Yeah, you can. So if you hear any of discussion at SLCA about budgets, pledging, revitalization, that we're going to refinance, if you hear any of that language, matter of fact, if you hear any financial language and you panic, you're not paying attention to our communal experience here. How do we know you're sitting in it? The second part, spirit is our inexhaustible source of prosperity. Spirit, what is that? It's divine order. It's pure divine order, infinite intelligence, quantum in nature, everlasting abundance. That is what spirit is. What does inexhaustible source mean? It cannot be used up. We can't out-ask it. We can't tap it out. We can't outthink it. It is an inexhaustible source. It comes from the Latin, prosperus, and that's spelled U.S., prosper us, or prosperitas, and prosperitas means doing well. We are doing well by being well, and we are being well by knowing we are part of an inexhaustible source that's always got our back. That's prosperity. Okay, here's some news. Your job is not your source. Your income is not your source. Your clients are not your source. Real estate is not your source. Your IRA is not your source. Your pension is not your source. Your social security is not your source. The government is not your source. The bank is not your source. Your source is this pure, inexhaustible spirit, which you are. You are that. I love it when people say, I'm on a fixed income. Everyone's on a fixed income. It's just that it happens to be fixed to what you chose this past year, and you're fixing to choose the same amount next year. That's a fixed income. It's just fixed consciousness. So if I want more income, I bring a bigger cup. So my cup runneth over, so I bring a larger cup of consciousness to the fountainhead of prosperity. The third part says prosperity is our divine right. What does it mean? A right is more than a privilege. A right sounds like ownership to me. We have unalienable rights in our Declaration of Independence. They are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. What it says, unalienable, they cannot be given or taken away. Get that? You can't even give them away. We have human rights. Those feel a little squishy at times. Sometimes we have to fight for those. They have to be defended. But human rights really are a factor of the era of the time you are a human. But a divine right. A divine right you are born into. It is the nature of who you are. Now we're in the beingness of God, the givingness of God to all as you. So why? Why do we choose this? That we at SLCA know that spirit is our inexhaustible source of prosperity, which is our divine right. Because it's the truth it's the highest truth of you. It's the highest truth of our community. It's the highest truth of our center. And so here's my wish for you today, my highest wish. Prosperity is a given. What we're dealing with is your willingness to accept it. Your willingness to accept it is 100% about self worth. My highest knowing for you today is that you crank your self-worth up three notches today and accept all your goodness. And so it is. As we come to our time of grateful giving today, the ushers are preparing to come forward. We're going to do an offering. 
And I just want you to know, we have a pledge drive. Again, if you hear the word pledge and it freaks you out, praise God. Because there is the gold. There is the gold. Get comfortable with money because it's yours. So we are right now at 47600 a month in pledges. We're going to 50000 If you'd like to be part of that, bring your cup. Fill it up. All right, the ushers will come forward. Good morning. My name is Ife Senachi Nana, and you may call me Nana. <laughs> I am from the Caribbean area. I'm from the Virgin Islands, and I grew up in Puerto Rico. I overcame Catholicism to embark on a journey <laughs> <laughs> as a Buddhist and as an, an Islam. And my journey brought me here to the Spiritual Living Center about five years ago, and I am so grateful, so truly grateful. One of the things that I learned along the way, everywhere I went, God was there, kind of like following me, being me. <laughs> and so I am grateful I have my family, my daughter-in-law, my granddaughter, and two dear friends supporting me here today. And I get to have uh, a role in the dance ministry that um, comes before you to bring, bring you the spiritual nourishment that you need through dance and movement. Today, with the help of Dana Robinson and Sharon Larindo, we are going to engage on a journey to gratitude. So if you would open your little um, booklet and take out the flyer and read, me, read with me the gratitude statement. At SLCA, we know that gratitude is a catalyst for abundant living. Living from the truth that God is all there is anchors me in a life that consciously expresses gratitude and thanksgiving. Gratitude becomes the living prayer affirmed at all times and under all conditions, rather than a polite response to a pleasing effect. It facilitates the expectation of good, dispelling fear, anxiety, and worry. A lifestyle of gratitude enables us to move beyond what eyes and ears See and hear to know God, the source of all, is omnipresent love, divine intelligence, and divine order in all. Before I receive, before my desires take form, I imagine and begin to feel the good they bring, and I'm grateful to live in a universe where my good already exists abundantly. Gratitude continuously attracts my good, and abundance. My highest good seeks me. I expect its demonstration. Focus on the presence of God expands my awareness that God is all and I am one with all. I become a better steward of our resources. I care for our, earth, <clears throat> for our earthly home and body temple. I waste less and share more willingly because I know that God is my abundance. I love more deeply and forgive more readily. Through my heightened awareness of the limitless opportunities to serve our community and to be fully engaged in the flow of life, I realize that each of us is the blessing to the world. Gratitude shows up as love, peace, and joy. From the rising of the sun to its going down throughout the day, Throughout the years, my heart responds to life with gratitude. Grateful to open my eyes. Grateful to be in right mind. Just grateful to be, I am. Spirit is my life and all is well. I feel the presence of God everywhere and as everyone. I know that life works. God is love. God is peace. God is joy. I am love. I am peace. I am joy. And that I am. i 
afraid. Happy, happy anniversary, everyone. I, um, I was thinking it, 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 it's been close to 30 years since I've been embarked upon my, this philosophy myself. And part of a major part of that was in being in all of the centers across the globe. And I must say, there is no center like Spiritual Living Center of Atlanta. When I think of the teaching, when I think of the inclusion, when I think of the service, and when I think of the love and the prosperity and the gratitude that is exemplified by our practitioners and by each and every one of you here, it is um, no, no mistake that when people come, when guest speakers come, they go, what are you drinking? <laughs> Because there is nothing uh, so beautiful and so unique and so fantastic as this membership. So I do have to say thank you to this amazing choir. Because not just this weekend, starting with Friday night, they have been here for hours hours and hours and hours rehearsing the recording on Friday night. For those of you who physically showed up and brought your energy to support them as they were recording, I thank you. Uh, they have had to Febreze their outfits because they have been working so tremendously. And then to be here early again, um, again, to Penelope and the choir and Ty, please give it up one more time for them. To the practitioners who have served you today in representing a very mighty core, uh, kudos to Reverend, see, Reverend Lane Morgan. Uh, and the way, stand up Lane, Lane as part of her internship has been leading them week after week and, and, and culminating in the amazing work that they're doing. So to Lane and to all of our practitioners, if you would stand.
to our staff, to Nathan. Oh my God, where's Nathan? He is running rampant through the hallways constantly saying yes and bending over backwards to facilitate to be that glue. And of course it goes without saying to the amazing David Aurelio, our executive director. And that guy in there, Robert Hannon, Mr. Mohawk, who has, who has been here far longer than uh, most of us on the staff. And uh, Penelope reminded us uh, last night that there are things that you don't know about people because you just see them all the time. That guy's even won a Grammy. So smell you. To our board of trustees, thank you so much for the way in which you govern us. And so we are going to do a toast, a celebratory toast. I, what's the weather? Are we? Okay. So <laughs> when we dismiss, there are goblets of champagne and cider. Take your pick. Uh, and we will do a celebratory toast. And the, my final thank you is this amazing woman who's peeking out there. Her name is Jennifer Earl. We, we uh, were not going to do any kind of, uh, you know, extra, extra, extra other than the service. And Jennifer Earl took it upon herself financially and independently to put together the entire reception for today. So you must thank Jennifer Earl for that. Thank you so much. And so that's it. Thank you so much for coming. Join me out here for our celebra celebration toast. Mm -hmm.